Welcome back to the garage guys. Thanks for tuning in. Today I'm going to be using a tool I've never used before. It's actually a tool that I scored for free. But before I show you that tool, let me show you the progress we've made on the Gator so far. Obviously it looks a lot different than the last time you saw it. I've already went ahead and installed the engine. We've got the transmission back in. We've been kind of knocking this thing out because I really want to get done with this one so I can work on that one and get that engine over in it. So just trying to rush through this thing. I did come across a bit of a hiccup and that's where I want to make this video today we're missing two tires well not missing but they don't hold air i'm not 100 percent sure where they're leaking i want to say one of them has a cut on a sidewall who knows on the other one i just know they're leaking air so i'm going to get some soapy water leak test these things and see how bad the situation really is you guys may be wondering why i'm going through all this effort with these old tires well, turns out these tires got pretty good tread left and I found out they're expensive. They're about 150 a piece, so I have no interest in buying these things if I don't have to. There it is. I've got a hole in the sidewall on this one. So I'm gonna fix this one, but I'm gonna come back around to it and check this other one real quick and see how bad it is. Feeling better. I'm a little more optimistic about this one because I don't hear the air leaking yet. I still hear it leaking out of that thing though. Jeez. Interesting. Oh, I see it. You guys see that right here? We've got bubbles. It's a small leak, but it's definitely a leak there. I don't really see it doing anywhere else, but it's kind of the same situation for both these sidewall repairs. They're difficult. In fact, they're nearly impossible if you want one to last. I really don't want to take any chances trying to patch this thing or fix these sidewalls. So what I'm going to do is install a pair of tubes. Now it's been a long time since I put a tube in a tire, probably like when I was a kid riding a bicycle. So this is a little bit different animal. First thing I got to figure out is how am I going to get the tire off the wheel? Well, that's where the special tool comes in. Guys, may I present to you the Harbor Freight tire changing machine. This has got to be the most basic and cost-effective way to get a tire off the rim and a whole lot safer than trying to use a pair of pry bars. This is actually left behind by the previous owner. I guess for whatever reason he didn't take it and he left it here in the piles of garbage he left for us. So when we were cleaning up I set it aside for a rainy day. Well it's not raining but we're gonna put this thing to work. The first thing I need to do is get this thing bolted to the ground. The whole concept of this tool is really just being able to hold the wheel and the tire steady while you take the well, hold the wheel steady while you take the tire off. So what I'm going to do is put some studs in the concrete and mount this puppy right over there behind that door. I went ahead and did a test fit with my tire to make sure it would work. Now let's bore some holes in this pad and see if we can't get this thing to stay put. I guess I should have made sure these anchors fit this thing before I got too serious with it. Oh yeah, it'll work. These things are the greatest. So far so good, we've got it mounted and uh, I think it's ready to dismount a tire. Now, if it seems like I'm struggling with all this, it has been a little while since I have uh, changed a tire. The last time I changed a tire, it was with a Hunter machine that was probably, I'd say it was probably over $50,000 machine. It was all push button. You didn't actually have to touch the tire. Completely computer controlled. So this is kind of the, uh, the opposite. I all right, so the first step is I gotta get the air out of the tire. Next step is we have to position the tire kind of like on that little guy there. All right, so we got the tire on there. Um, this is the part that's kind of like the shovel that breaks it down. I believe we need to position this kind of uh, like right there. Yeah, yeah. And that's gonna be what we use to break this bead with. We're gonna, we're doing this with one hand, so we're gonna have to put the foot to work. 
look at that that was impressive these things are older too so i figured they'd be kind of stuck flip it over kind of the same thing break this other bead not quite as friendly on this side so this is the hard side we'll get it though there it is all right so that bead is broke Unfortunately, it didn't come with any tire slime, so I just went ahead and put soapy water around both sides of this tire. Hopefully that'll help it slide off the rim a little easier. Next, we need to put it up here, lining that up with one of the, uh, the wheel bolt holes. So far, so good. Now, this is limited to, uh, I believe, nine inch wheel is the smallest wheel you can fit on this machine. They make a smaller one, but this is actually built for car tires. So the next thing you do is install this guy here which is what keeps the wheel planted firmly to the, uh, the device. And then we gotta screw this on all the way down. Almost. We're gonna give it a little more, uh, a little more oomph with this bar right here. The technique illustrated in the instructions as you do this and then this now you see why that's not working because i need two hands so give me just a second i'm gonna put two hands on this and pop this off so there we have it top bead is broke and off the rim tire is loose and we could probably go ahead and throw a tube in here now but that's too easy i want to go ahead and take this thing all the way off and there you have it bare wheel naked tire that was actually 10 times easier than i figured it would be i really want to go ahead and pull this down so i can see what the inside of this wheel looks like i mean is that not just massive for a gator how wide these back tires are you don't realize it till you see it broke down like this so i really wanted to take a minute and check these beads make sure there's no rust or anything else in there that could pop a tube and i want to cleanly cut this thing off and grind those edges smooth where that valve stem goes so I've got the wheel all cleaned up and ready. One thing that's quite often overlooked is the inside of the tire. You really want to check this thing and make sure there's nothing in here that might cause, you know, premature penetration. It looks pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and get this mounted up and we're going to stuff this tube in there. All right, so just a little bit of air in here so this thing starts taking its shape. We're going to lift this bad boy up and we're going to cram it down in that hole. Next, I need to catch that valve stem on that hole and tighten down that stem so the tire and tube can't twist independently. So now that we've got the valve stem secured, the really only thing you gotta be worried about is not stabbing the tool in there, pinching your tube and causing a hole. I mean, it's possible, trust me. If it can be done, I've done it. So there you have it, installed. Actually, it, it, way easier than I thought it was gonna be. It was harder to mount it than it was to actually do the tire job. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this one more time real quick on time-lapse, and then we're gonna take this Gator for a ride and see how she does.
indicator number two is up and running. We've got six tires holding air and it seems to crank consistently. So uh, I'm gonna call this project over with. It's time to focus our efforts on gator number three and get that GSX-R engine swapped out and over in that chassis. I think we can pull it off. But I'm gonna have to end this video off right there, guys. As always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank <laughs> you.